salute to happy new week i beg make on watch this video man don't talk too much this fearless man that is there among the people where i respect so much for nigeria daily faro to me this man don't talk plenty things. he has exposed a lot of things he not even hide mouth he's saying it the way it is and people need to hear it my people more now watch out help me just share this video we'll see you now for the next one you say the judiciary is the last hope of the common man it then means that for you to be able to preserve the illusion of a democracy justice must be seen to be done so this is the part where we now begin to connect with certain influences and influencers just before the release of the judgment of the PAPT a woman who has been variously alleged to be the conduit for corruption in the judiciary particularly the supreme court sat at a private event praising the legal dexterity of Tinubu's legal team at the tribunal threatening fire and brimstone and telling all of us about just exactly how we must accept whatever the pronouncement of the PAPT might be. Let me tell you something. The problem with the man that the system has coalesced well, around this time around is that in order to preserve the life of its noble presidency, the existing legal order would have to be destroyed by the judiciary. I will explain myself. There are multiple inconsistencies that cannot be consistent either with common sense or law that would have to be upheld by the judiciary before it might uphold the lies of Mahmoud and I make. So, when the last hope of the common man is lost, what is the common man to do? This is the part where you begin to deal with the, leg the legitimization of grievances. And that is where the concept of bad joy and all the other influencers who have been busy seeking to delegitimize the grievances of those who witnessed the brutal snatch it, grab it, run with it, that took place and was aided, painfully aided by Mahmoud and Ainek. And then they politely told us before the entire world, go to court. The confidence with which they declared that we should go to court was suggestive of a thief who was aware that his accomplice awaits because this was a brazen theft, brazen in the extreme. People were killed. Threats were issued in broad daylight. Actual intimidation took place. In places like rivers, it was so brazen. All over the country, clear evidences of state-aided brigandage against those who elected to exercise their franchise. But when our dear prof, who has decided to become partisan on the side of Tinubu, his friend, would characterize the fascists, it was the victims that became fascists. Another story for another day. These are the delegitimization of grievances and it deodorizes fascism because the true fascists are given free passes whilst the victims are labeled. And these labels are coming from no less than a person unto whom we would have looked not only for guidance but for the truth. And these are not truths. They are obvious misstatements of facts. So the question is this, why are our grievances being delegitimized? Since when did generals, aside from the liability that OBJ is, since when did they become part of the obedient movement? 
since when have we embraced them as a movement that they are now the ones using us? We are a regional party, but we whooped Tinubu's ass in Lagos, whooped his ass in Plato, in Benue, and we are a regional party in Adamawa, in Nasarawa. These are deliberate attempts at delegitimization because if you do not delegitimize, you cannot substantiate the hope that the judiciary is about to crush. But why are they seeking to delegitimize? Let me remind you, when the existing legal order, as of 1979, had died, the Nigerian Supreme Court, in a precedence it demanded must not be used under the doctrine of stare decisis, which means that the judgment of the upper court must bind the lower court, that court at that time declared that the decision that to third of 19 states or was, I think, 12 to third or some ingenious fraud or, or the other. But it declared that it must not be used as a precedence in future. Is the Supreme Court being prepped for something similar by those who will seek to delegitimize the victory of the obedient movement? Not Peter Obi, it is the obedient movement. Peter Obi being merely our totem. Is it that we are being prepared for the marketing that the Tinubu government is already seeking to do, to claim that this is all about Peter with Igbos and Ibo? No. This is about hope. This is about tomorrow. This is about the judiciary interpreting the laws as imperfect as they are. The 1999 constitution is a fraud. I was one of the first to start yelling about it in recent times. A fraud, the 24 of 1999, is a fraud. We said so repeatedly. Now, if it has run its course, and the judiciary must understand that it has run its course, then let the judiciary pronounce it so. But to continue to presume, to believe that the existing legal order, which has declared very clearly, copiously, the status of Abuja, the issue with forfeiture, the sacrosanct of beavers and its application, and numerous other grounds upon which many other lawyers who care to practice will proceed before the Supreme Court. Let it be known that it will be the Nigerian judiciary that would terminate the existing legal order by its refusal to uphold the law. Now, when this has been done, what do we do? I told you, there is a critical need to build a moral majority instead of the violence that the system is seeking and that it would prefer. Because this is the part that we are entering deep waters. Hear me? We are entering deep waters. And this is where the deep must go to the deep. However few we are, this is the time when we must engage with all, all, because this is not some pro-democracy thing. Let's be clear. For the existing legal order to be destroyed and a government to be in place, it will mean that the law no longer rules. It will be the imperatives of men. If the imperatives of men are going to rule, it is on the conscious to begin to deal with the issues outside of politics. This is where the likes of my brothers I don't want to start calling anyone out this morning, but if you are in Nigeria, you need to ask yourself exactly what are the boundaries of truth. Did we just have an election, truly so called? Forget your political affiliations, your tribal affiliations, your religious nonsense, and all of that. Did we just have an election? If we did, did a winner truly emerge based on clear minds? If one has emerged in your own view, ask yourself the parameters of truth by which you have measured. What tainted your stream to the point where you could deodorize a lie? Let's be clear. Tinubu is a lie. Everything about Tinubu is a lie. And everyone who would deign to cloak him would have to unveil themselves. You would have to uncloak yourself to cover Tinubu. And everyone who would presume to do so 
would only find that their own cloak of honor will be shared for nothing because the lie that he is cannot be sustained. That is the reality of Tinobu. If the judiciary presumes to believe that it can legitimize what is essentially a lie, what will simply happen is that the last vestige of honor that might be presumed to the court, it would have to dip it in the soil and then wear it upon a man it will not fit. And then it itself will be completely naked. By the end of this process, we will know very clearly whether indeed the judiciary is the last hope of the common man or whether it is the proof of the hopelessness of the Nigerian situation. When hope is smashed, what usually happens is that the hopeless becomes violent. And this is where we enter the deep waters. It is not in our interest to be violent. This is one of the first things we must tell ourselves. I'm not saying that we should be passive. I'm not suggesting that we should be accepting of slavery. But I am saying that we must begin to examine our options but nothing violent must cross our minds. Reason being this, the system had hoped that we would have taken to the street after February 25. Our refusal to take to the street is the reason why we are still talking about the legitimacy of Jamdas government. If we are taken to the street, a few would have been killed, if not many. A people that would deny the daylight murder, unprovoked murder at Lekki Gate, they would explain, and I assure you, the victims will be the ones that will be labeled the fascists. Let's be clear about that. So, avoid every invitation to violence. We are not without options when it comes to modes of protests. If we engage the street or offer opportunity for the system to find sacrificial lambs, it will grab it, it will snatch it, it will run with it, and we will be the ones that will be blamed for provoking, sustaining violence that the system would have been the one not only to provoke but to sustain. There are multiple levels of protest. But before we get to that point, we must take time to step outside of our comfort zones, engage with other victims, because whether they be PDP, APC, my orange wearing, revolutionaries, we are all victims of a common evil. We must move beyond our disagreements with the other victims. I'm not talking about the beneficiaries. There are beneficiaries who do not want anything to change. They are grievance contractors. They enjoy the arguments and the pains. They make monies from it. We must move beyond all of that. We must reach out. Let them see the commonalities. Don't focus on the pain. Forget what they said in March even triumphantly, even after the PEPT. Look beyond that, because if we are divided before we get to the point of engagement, what happens is that fellow victims become soldiers in the war against us. So it is critical that we move beyond that, engage with them, show them. The purpose of my time with you is to help you to weaponize your brain. He who is not against you is for you. If you get them to the point where they understand why you are aggrieved, how related to them you are, instead of constantly talking down at them, I understand not being able to deal with the irredeemable fools somehow, unfortunately. But as much as you can, engage, talk to them. Let them know that this is not about house. It's not even about today. It's about the kind of country we're trying to build. What kind of people are we? Where is the moral bar? The president of the most populous black nation in the world. No, scratch that, not nation. The country, if you will, has criminal records that these people can't even see, but if foreign powers are seen, it has subverted society to the point where we can't even trust our judiciary, not just him, but the system that has thrown him up. We've essentially become a country run by criminals. 
and then our judiciary will find the grace to somehow theodorize and legitimize that on the back of whatever technicalities or whatever they might care. It is up to us to decide if we have a country or if we do not. That is entirely in our own hand. It is not for anyone else. The judiciary is the last hope of the common man. Okay. We'll find out soon enough. But we will also be finding out just how ready are you to birth a country you can hand over to your children. Because if this is the judiciary of the country that they are going to be building for the future of our children, I guess you can understand why hordes of our people are braving the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean. Why the entire middle class is running away and voting with his leg. And the country is bleeding out. And the only people for whom the system is working are the ruiners of Nigeria. I'm not a protester. I have no interest in protests. I'm interested in building a new system, a new country. I disavow violence and I have no portion in it. But there is a line that must be drawn at some point where sanity is established. That will be dependent on how receptive you are to evil and how ready you are to fight against it. I thank you for your time again this morning. I am being careful for two reasons not to speak more than I have about the Supreme Court. In due course, we understand. But let's just say this. A people gets the country they built. Nigeria is in the labor room. The Supreme Court will birth something. It will either birth the truth or it will birth a lie. Lies die always. They're lacking in longevity. Lies are always lacking in longevity. A miracle in room, it dies. No matter who is telling the lie, lies die. But the truth is eternal. There is a judicial path to the Nigerian revolution. It is the point where clarity is made clear. That is when we will know if we are truly a country ruled by law or whether we are a country ruled by the will of men. And if we are a country ruled by the will of men, because countries have been raised by the will of men, in fact, that is the only way countries can ever be raised. But what kind of country are we building by the will of the perverse men who are running Nigeria today? What kind of country? One where the law does not matter. All you have to do is snatch it, grab it, and run with it. If I was running a church, I'd be a Catholic priest. Shot. I'm done for today. See you next week, Sunday. And yes, let the pastors tell the truth. And I probably have no one to speak with on Sunday morning, especially my Christian brothers. To my Muslim brothers, Salam Alaikum. And yes, then. You lot in Wara, you die a lot a lot. When are you going to leave Tanya alone? What you happen? All the thieves that are killing your space, you are not talking about them, you are not yelling about them, you are not fighting against them. But a man who is speaking his mind, you might not, you don't need to like what he's saying. Why the heck are you lot so fanatical about God? Then, he loves you. The man is merely talking, let him be. Salam alaikum, bye bye.